Okay. Rain or shine, we do match reactions. And this is the worst, the worst Sheffield United defeat I have seen in my life. I have I went to uh Man City six, Sheffield United nil. I want to say like 1999, feels like that. This I've I've genuinely just taken two paracetamol because I've got a headache after watching that display. I am sickened. How do you feel? I mean, it almost feels pointless going through all the notes I've made. I, I've done notes on everything, looking at uh, the side we put out, the changes, uh, the fact we had a lone striker in Archer. I've gone through all of that, uh, worked out what the away side's formation was. Just all of that feels totally pointless. I, I don't even think it's worth going through that. So what I am going to start with is talking about something that really matters, something that's actually important that we can all agree with, that we came together and was something worth talking about. The players all came out before kickoff. We saw every Blades player wearing Maddie Cusack's name on their back in memory of Sheffield United women's player Maddie Cusack, who was also involved in the club's marketing department, a large part of the fabric of the club. Maddie tragically died in the week at the age of just 27. A dedicated space for tributes to her was set up outside Bramall Lane for any supporters who wished to pay their respects. Maddie's picture was on the match day program and some truly fitting tributes paid before kickoff, observed immaculately by both sets of supporters, as well as a minute silence. On eight minutes, the ground rose as one to its feet, all those that could, to salute Maddie's memory. And I only had a few uh, dealings with her myself. And uh, Nick had spoken to her on a few occasions and what, what a truly wonderful, wonderful person she was. So supportive of this channel and really, really such a tragic loss. So from all of us at, at Chef United Way, just wanted to get that out there. That is far more important than anything on the pitch. Uh, but we are doing a match reaction to a game, so we are going to talk about it. But that for me, much, much more important for Maddie and... Uh, I think we can all agree Maddie was a, a a truly, truly wonderful person. So if we if we do look at the game, uh, we talk about the first chance on three minutes. It fell to a fairly open Luke Thomas in the box, but he couldn't set himself. It was uh, Bogle on the right who switched it wing back to wing back and uh, Trippier actually blocked that effort. McAtee delivered to Thomas on 40 minutes, again in space on the left, and he made a right mess of it. Technique all over the place, a proper awkward finish. And uh, United could have been 2-0 up. And really, that is as good as it got. Um, I could pick out other moments before Newcastle scored. I made a few notes that Norwood at one point did really well, sweeping at the back in the box to deny Callum Wilson. That was a 1v1 situation. and. You know, Newcastle could have been in. Uh, that Souza had a, a stinging drive on 18 from outside the area. It was set up by Hamer, but straight at Pope. That would be Sheffield United, as far as I could recall, only shot on target. Uh, seconds later, Souza re recovered when it looked like Almiron had the freedom of Bramble Lane to pick a pass and set the Magpies away. But Souza did really well, got a tackle in. Uh, such a good tackle, actually, went all the way out for a throw. But, you know, he saw at that moment Paul Heckingbottom was really angry and he was he was yelling at the players. He was apoplectic with rage at the gap in midfield, allowing Almiron that amount of space. And I don't know, it was it was interesting at the time I remember looking at that and, and I was like, right, how are our players reacting to Hecky at this moment? And then I think we got our answer. And I've got concerns about this. And this is why I'm bringing this specific moment up because, well, Barnes got injured for Newcastle, went off and Gordon replaced him. And that, that ended up being crucial. And we saw a goal. Newcastle had the lead from Longstaff on 21 minutes, his first of the season. Sheffield United players not happy. Gordon looked to have carried the ball out of play and then it hit his hand. But review suggested the ball didn't go all the way out. He kept it in. It did hit his hand. That's not up for debate in the build-up. And that helped him keep it in play. But I've looked at the new laws because nowadays, don't get me started on the new laws. Like handball used to be handball, right? It's all changed now. So 
this is a change. Uh, a few seasons ago, or whatever, that, that would have been handball, but let me just read it. The second change is an accidental handball in the immediate build-up to a goal. If an attacking player's accidental handball immediately precedes another player scoring, the goal will now be awarded. When before it would have been ruled out. So that sort of clears that up. Uh, it's not a case that that should have been disallowed. Still, you know, frustrating because it, it kept it, it kept the ball. It helped to keep it in, you know. Um, anyway, Bosnian uh, defender Anel sides Gordon down on the left flank. He was pretty angry with him and uh, not a pretty one. Received his third yellow of the season on 28. I thought uh, Trippier's free kick that he took after that was nestling into the far corner, but uh, it was just wide. Then we saw another goal. This is going to be a theme of this. 31 looked like Newcastle's handball again before the corner, but uh, ignored Newcastle corner on the left. Uh, I mean, I kind of I say it looked like a handball. I want to say I kind of missed that really, and I was just like a lot of people telling me that, so I'm not really sure. But a header from Dan Byrne, we were linked with signing him for a long, long time. Really unsurprising here that I'm going to be talking about this so often because the marking, my God, God, for this second goal. We'll look at other goals, and the marking was shocking, but this one bothered me the most. The marking from Anel, he's the wrong side of Dan Byrne, and he's fouling him. He's tugging at his shirt, and he's also not strong enough, even with all that, to stop Dan Byrne, who just does what he was going to do anyway. Just like Anel isn't even there. He's like a giant man, just like pounding past him and like holding on, like, oh, let me get close to you, and the blades were two down. That, that isn't like Anel at all. I've had slight worries about Anel. I hope he's all right because since his glandular fever, I honestly don't think Anel has been the level that we saw. And we saw Anel at a really high level. And I think Anel's one of the best defenders we've had the pleasure of watching, but he's not right there at the moment. Seems to be struggling. Longstaff went down on 34. Jack Robinson picked up a yellow. Trippier was giving it all that. It, it, it was a good challenge for me. Jack Robinson got the ball. Just the force of the follow through and it was forceful, and that saw Longstaff deck it. Carlos Saba tweeted this at the time. Can't believe what I'm seeing. Week in, week out from officials. Robbo's tackle given as a foul means it's no longer a game I recognise. Sick of it. Sick of highly skilled millionaires feigning injury and simulating free kicks as officials see it. Fine, but I'm sick of it. So that's what Carl thinks. Pretty strong stuff. And a goal from the resultant free kick from Trippier. Botman glanced home a third on his 50th appearance, his first for the Magpies. And I was starting, I already made a note, I was starting to worry about goal difference. Starting to look like a concern. That was at least one thing we could always say this season without a win. Oh, we're not in the bottom three. And oh, goal difference by the end of the season could prove crucial. Well, we were in the bottom three before this, and now goal difference is a huge, huge concern. By the way, this evaded Botman. Uh, sorry, evaded Norwood. He was in front of Botman for this goal. Just so kind of... If they look back on all of these goals, every single Sheffield United player could look at themselves and go, right, I could see what I could have done better there. Newcastle appealed for a penalty on 38. Bogle, who I, I was not impressed with, uh, tripped Gordon in the box, got none of the ball, and Gordon Shim was hit. I couldn't defend that if it had been given as a pen. At 45 minutes, this is where it was slightly interesting because it felt like we hadn't been in this. The Blades and Newcastle had shared 50-50 possession. The Blades had had six shots. Newcastle had nine. Crucially, seven of those on target for the away side, only one for us. Happy Chappy, sorry. How the hell is no one criticising Norwood? I just have. Uh, should be no one in the starting eleven. I mean, you know, a bad day today. By the way, I really appreciate you donating because I do not want to be doing this right now. I do not want to talk about this game. This is actually one game where I'd like to say, let's never talk about it again. Let's just put it behind us. We move, as people say. But I can't do that because why would I only be right if we only came out and did match reactions when we won? I just... Because if you're a Sheffield United fan, you're not a fair weather fan anyway, are you? Because when you were a kid, you could have picked Man United. You could have picked Liverpool. You could have picked whoever was winning it at the time. But we stuck with our team. This is my team because my family supports Sheffield United. That's why I support Sheffield United. So I'm not just going to turn up when it's all rosy and when it's good. We have to do these at all times. And I really appreciate your donation. Thank you very much for that. If anyone else wants to do that, you'd make a difficult day slightly better. Uh, Gordon had a shot deflected over by Wes on 51 in the first half because, of course, we're getting so much time added on in these games now. And I want I want a lot less in the Premier League because it's hard to watch. Uh, there was no time to take the corner at halftime. Bogle went off at halftime. The left side for Newcastle got far too much joy. Anyone could see that. And we saw a formation change. I mean, you can say what you like about Hecky. 
he tried to change things. Benny Traore came on. We went for two up top. It looked to me like a 4-3-1-2. That would change as the game went on. I felt like we had no answer to Newcastle, whatever we did. Goal on 57. I'm not going to take too much time talking about all this now. We're just going to get to your comments in a moment. Newcastle made it four. Right side cross. Captain Trippier straight to an unmarked Callum Wilson. It's not like we don't know about Callum Wilson, all right? We played against him for Coventry, for goodness sake. And Callum Wilson from close range, he couldn't miss. Really, really terrible, terrible defending. The reaction to that goal I thought was really important because the Blades very rarely seem to get hammered. But today was a lesson. I can't remember the last time we got I mean, if we, what do we define as a hammering? Maybe Coventry away, you know, when Berger scored uh, the first in that one and then we just fell apart. Uh, but the Premier League seems to have become a rich get richer, a much more ruthless place since we were last here. No room for the week where the established order can close ranks in terms of fitness, quality, spending, and there's no hope for any magic or fairy tale story from a newly promoted side. The gulf is just too great. And really, the only hope is that your club is bought by a billionaire or a group of billionaires. Because you can say right now, sack the board, sack Hecky, change whatever you like. It won't make any difference until the club has a billionaire owner or a group of billionaires, because that is football nowadays. The question isn't how good your first 11, it's how rich is your owner. Disallowed goal on 61, Gordon had a shot saved low by where's Almiron's follow-up disallowed. The Paraguayan was offside. Then we had a goal straight after that. I mean, you've just had the warning. Gordon on 61 scored to make it five. He was on the left. Of course he was. He was so busy. Outside the box, cut onto his right. Anel did nothing. And Gordon curled his shot round Wes into the far corner. It was a man of a match performance from Gordon today. Tom Davies replaced Norwood. 4-2-3-1 was the look of the formation following this. By the way, Newcastle never scored more than three at Bramall Lane. Newcastle appealed for a penalty. Anel on Gordon in the box on 64. Slomani was then on on 66. The number 25 on for Hamer. Then we had a goal, 68. Almiron, 6-0. Embarrassing, brutal, painful, devastating. Potentially pivotal to our future. The defending was awful. A pass straight in between the defence from Bruno Guimaraes to Almiron. Running into the box and just easy. Slot it home. £150 million worth of talent then came on on 70 minutes for Newcastle. You know, the job was done. Tonali, Liveramento, Isak on. Anel blazed. A great chance over on 71. Traore set him up in the box on the right, but over and our best chance had fallen to two defenders. That was it. We had two chances, really. Luke Thomas in the first, particularly the first one for him. Luke Thomas again, Anel, but defenders. Not every defender can be Vasco Bokis. First time in my lifetime we'd conceded six at home. I remember us beating West Brom six at home back in 2000 at the lane, but losing at home by that scoreline, I don't remember it. I don't remember it, and it got worse. Seven. Alexander Isak in the box. Longstaff had his shot blocked. Bruno Guimaraes uh, smashed home, so it was relentless on 74. This saw United defend the initial pass forward of just two defenders. Others came back but could do nothing as Jack Robinson slid in trying to stop it, but it was so painful. A question of professionalism, of personal pride. Basham replaced McAtee on 75. Sousa picked up a yellow on 76. I mean, the reason I'm mentioning these is they could become important. These bookings are coming together with a Newcastle defender. I don't remember who. Lewis Hall came on for Bruno Guimaraes on 82. And the only reason I mention this is Newcastle were using the game now as a chance to experiment with a new system. They went three at the back, it appeared to me. Uh, goal number eight. So I said before, Isak, what I meant was Isak started the last one. Isak on 87. United's worst ever home defeat. Uh, Tom Davis header. Back to the goalkeeper intercepted by Isak, never going to have enough on the header. An odd decision by Davis, really amateur stuff, and eight different goal scorers, which has never happened in the Premier League. Uh, we saw a record broken at Tottenham with the latest ever comeback, or we broke a record today. By the way, Davis passing was off as well. I was, I was disappointed. No need for injury time in this one. I've, I've refereed at a very, 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 very low level. And you can blow up if it's if it's all over. Uh, but no, six minutes added on because, of course, because, of course, there was. And Egan was booked during that. Full-time, 8-0, 22 shots for Newcastle, 15 on target. Sheffield United with nine, only one on target, according to the BBC stats. If anything's wrong with that, blame the Big British Castle. Two away games next, West Ham and Fulham, then Man United at home, followed by Arsenal on the road. Interesting times. I'm going to ask you this question. What did you make of it? Have the wilder rumours upset things? 
in the camp. Gary, they'll sack Hecky and give the job to McCall. It's a pretty safe bet. Last team to have eight different players to score in a game was Liverpool, I think, in the 80s. Well, the Premier League started in 92, and that's when football started. The concern is, are the players lacking belief in the manager? Anel, way off the pace. What is going on with Anel? I really, really don't understand that. Uh, well done, Hal. Professional job, as always, James. I love you. Um, we need to go back to hoofball for a bit. Do you think? Uh, Archer overrated. Miss McBurney, one-man band. Egan is a disaster. Egan is is having a pretty tough start to the season. Am I hecky out? No. As I've said before, you can change anything. Like, you know, you could demand the board out. You can change the manager. But unfortunately, football's changed. This isn't like when we came up before. You know, if we could defend like we could when we finished ninth under Chris Wilder, if we could defend, we actually didn't create a lot in that season. We scored 38 goals, but we conceded 38 goals. Well, we're massively on pace to concede far more than that, but we might score around, we'll probably score less than that. <laughs> really, going forward, sometimes I think this team's actually pretty good, but defensively, we look all at sea. We, well, let's look at that. Disgraceful. Every one of them, they gave up. They did give up. They did give up, and there's no excuse for that because people have paid. Right, season ticket, done. People have paid money, and, and you've just got to give it everything because I'd give everything to be out there for one second playing for Sheffield United, and it did feel like they gave up. Embarrassing, says David. Defence was a bag of nerves trying to pass through their attack, and the set piece, God, the set pieces, the, the way we've defended crosses all season. And the set pieces, bad day today, showed the money gap. Yes, John, absolutely. And it is it is a money gap and the money, it does make such a difference now. It didn't used to make such a difference. Um, you know, in that very, I mentioned that in 92, right? So the very first season of the Premier League, you know, you, you felt like you could kind of be in almost any game. I mean, we just played Tottenham, right? Last game. I remember when we played Tottenham in the Premier League when I first really was watching football as a, as a lad and we beat them. We smashed them at home, 6-0. That's not going to happen anymore. It's just not going to happen. Football has changed, and not for the better. Not here to gloat at all. Just stick with your manager, and things will get better. Trust me, we want Sheffield in the Premier League. And thank you very much. Uh, yes, Maddie, of course, uh, to your meaning there. But absolutely, uh, thank you for those kind words. Uh, yeah, David, poor all of them. God knows what heck he says after that. I am... At West Ham and Fulham next. I'm not looking forward to it. At least we can still laugh at the piggies. You know what, David? I'm not probably not going to laugh at the piggies too much because it's just embarrassing for Sheffield football at the moment. And I always want Wednesday to do badly. But really, when we're doing badly, I don't really get any you know, satisfaction or joy out of it. Chuck the towel at time. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought they came out second half looking really, really bad. You know, I was my mum never says anything mean about anyone, and she messaged me at half time. <laughs> she said, "Glad Bogle's gone off." Now that's the that's the most unkind thing that my mother will ever say about anyone. And, and then I messaged back and said, "We're going to win this four three. And that's just like I get that kind of positivity from my mum, who is always so positive, right? But the players certainly didn't feel that way. They didn't come out thinking, "Right, we can turn this round, lads. Let's go." We did start off brightly and then we turned the light off after the first goal and played the rest of the game completely in the dark. It's a really good way of putting it. I kind of wish I'd said that. Yeah. Is it the worst performance you've ever seen from Sheffield United? Prob I mean, I think it is. I don't really think I was up for too much um, debate. Uh, Prince got what he wanted, undermined Hecky constantly, and now he can sack him. Do you think that's what the Prince wants? Do you not think, even if the Prince didn't care about Sheffield United, that he's going to get a better price for a club that's doing well because he's trying to sell it at the moment rather than one that's in turmoil sacking the manager? Uh, the defensive coach needs to go. Hudson, uh, abysmal. We were like the new kid in class who doesn't know exactly what is happening. The thing is, we were the new kid a few years ago. So you're right. Lessons should really have been learned. Um, I, I, I don't want to let's just focus on the um, on the game and, and not sort of anything like that. Um, defensive coach needs to go. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be um, a theme. Or oh, I'm thinking we could do the old Warnock helping Paul in the dugout. Do you reckon? Do you think Paul Eckenbottom would want like a director of football to come in above him? Do you know what? As much as I love Neil Warnock, I think 
what what Neil's good at is motivating, right? So this this group might need motivating. I'll give you that. I don't know if maybe the game has moved on now. And and actually, I read and, un- and don't understand a lot of modern football and a lot of analytics. I'm not clever enough. I'm not analytically minded. I'm not good at maths. Or if you're American watching this, math. I do think those people, the people who are analytically minded, they might be the kind of people you want to bring in, maybe. Or, like, you could be right, get it back to basics. I don't I don't think Neil's coming back in in any way, shape, or form. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Oliver. Feel sorry for the guy in the highlights. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's – you know what? I mean, Chef United put the highlights of this up. It'll actually get massive views, and it'll, it'll, it'll probably be – Probably be a lot of Newcastle fans watching that again and again. Someone please tell me what on earth we was playing about. Yeah, it's just so, so disappointing. I mean, you can read these comments. I can go through them one by one, but you kind of get the idea. I, I'm probably going to leave it there. I feel like we are going to end up repeating ourselves I know that if you if you do want to listen to something that maybe explains it better than anyone else has and puts it into context, Blades Pods post Tottenham they describe the Premier League in the way that I don't think anyone else has defined it quite so well. So um, this result doesn't define the season, Michael. Here we go. Uh, it will be defined by the results against the team in the Blades Mini League. Yes, that is true, and we are in a mini league. And you know what? If we can turn it around against the teams around us, then um, it, it could be different. Thank you. Uh, for saying that and yeah I hope we stay up as well but a part of me says if we don't stay up I can actually cope with that as well because we'll get the money from the Premier League and the championship without sounding like too much of a defeatist blade I, I do enjoy the championship do you know what I enjoy it's just really really sensible and simple so I'm just going to say it I enjoy watching Sheffield United win that's actually all I care about be that in whatever league I like watching us win because this is going to ruin my entire week I already had a weekend ruined by Tottenham but you know this is this looks very very difficult now to compete for reasons I've already said thank you all for watching this uh we will have more videos debating whether we do the fans react tomorrow or not kind of don't really feel like it but also like I said before we should probably do it rain or shine keep the comments post, post them below let us know what you think what's the future where do we go from here